View Masters. It's the podcast that we do. View Masters. Talk about movies that we view. View Masters. My friend Eric and me, Joe. View Masters. Hey, let's start the show. Hey, welcome to the View Masters, episode 226. Bumblebee. My name is Joe. My name is Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello, Joe. How are you? I'm as well as I can be. How are you? Uh, same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things are great. Yeah, things are, are really, really going. Yep. Here, yep. here on this yep. this earth. Yep. <laughs> things sure do keep happening. <laughs> they really do. They, they, <laughs> the, the years start coming and they don't stop coming. No, no, they do not. <laughs> I heard that in a famous song once. <laughs> well, I, 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 uh, what what famous song is that? Uh, uh, All Star by Smash Mouth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> speaking okay. of things that are happening, <laughs> Smash Mouth is apparently still happening. <laughs> People are shockingly still showing up to their concerts. Well, you know, when you're tired of being cooped up, you'll just go see anyone. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, exactly. Oh, they're all stars. They, they might as well be walking on the sun. <laughs> if you think about Day, it. Yeah, daydream believer? <laughs> uh, no, uh... Uh, just I'm a believer. Oh, I'm a believer. Day- Daydream right. believer is a different monkey song. I, I knew they covered a monkey song. I just didn't remember which one. Yeah, no, it's it's yeah. fair. Yeah, <laughs> I remember because I because I really liked the monkeys when I was younger, and uh-huh. I remember like right why after, don't you like them now? Is my question immediately. Uh, they're they're fine. <laughs> I don't dislike them now. <laughs> Did, did they get canceled and I'm not aware of that this? I don't think they got canceled. Okay, because I love the monkeys. <laughs> yeah, if if they were canceled, I am unaware of it at this point. All right, and I guess yeah, I mean, you know, I shouldn't say that I, I, I definitely don't dislike them now. I was just a more avid fan, I guess. Okay, when I was All younger, right. that's fair. Uh, so when when Smash Mouth covered that song. Uh, every time it would come on on the radio, I would briefly get excited thinking that I was about to hear the monkeys on the radio. And then (laughs) without fail, every time it was Smash Mouth. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I don't Uh, know. Yeah. I was, I was, uh, definitely a big fan of the monkeys when I was a kid, uh, cause that's right around the time when they had like their... 20th anniversary okay i'm guessing i think that's when that was like late 80s yeah mid 80s gotcha uh and uh like they were on mtv quite a bit and uh like they attempted the new monkeys oh i am not familiar with the new monkeys (laughs) so in order to capitalize on the monkeys brand uh, a uh, entirely new group of young, hip, uh, 80s uh, pop wannabes uh, became the new monkeys. Oh my god. <laughs> yep. That sounds like a train wreck. <laughs> it pretty much was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like an exciting train wreck that I definitely want to watch. Um, I mean, I guess. <laughs> it's certainly full of 80s. All right. <laughs> Just, you know, feathered mullets and weird neon squigglies. Wow. <laughs> I, I will be looking that up when we're done here. I'm making a note to myself. <laughs> Excellent. Because that's, that's exciting. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, I've never stopped liking the monkeys. Good. Uh, They're pretty um, great. Yeah. Uh, Every time I use Whiteout, I think of the monkeys. As you should. Uh, I just discovered the other day that uh, Mike Nesmith apparently uh, 
won like the first video Grammy. Really? Yeah. I mean, I know like he was instrumental in then you know uh, making music videos a thing. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he put out like a like a, a movie, a, like a feature length music video of sorts that also had like comedy skits in it. Was that head? No, not no, head. This okay. was not head. Yeah, uh, this was was early eighties, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of the movie. Uh, but I, I stumbled on it while I was uh, trying to buy things on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look it up real quick here. Okay, just to just to get the title. I have seen Head. Uh, oh I, yeah, I yeah, recorded as that. Have I. I recorded it off of like Turner Classic Movies at one point, and <laughs> yeah, that movie is fucking weird. <laughs> Oh, gosh, yes, it is. No, it's not that. Um, stupid Mike Nesmith IMDb. This is riveting radio for the listeners. Yes, it is. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> who is your favorite yeah. monkey? Let us know. I'll tell you who my favorite monkey is. Who's your favorite monkey? It is uh, Peter. All right. Peter Tork. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who my favorite monkey is. <laughs> I asked the question and I don't have an answer for it myself. Oh, well, that's a shame. I it know. is called Elephant Parts. Okay. <laughs> and it is from 1981. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. A collection of comedy skits and music videos, such as a game show spoof called Name That Drug, a visit to the office of the clandestine typing service, and a man providing a skewed translation of Mexican serenade for his girlfriend. Oh, no. That... <laughs> May not have aged well. <laughs> I'm guessing not. Nope. <laughs> but it sounds kind of similar to Head. Uh, yeah, I think Head uh, was was just a little more uh, like I feel like this was just more sketch comedy type thing with yeah. music, where Head was just fucking weird, right? <laughs> yeah. And Elephant Parts was directed by a man named Bill Martin, who also wrote Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's your monkey's trivia for the week. <laughs> Cue the theme song. <laughs> Here we come. Walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yes. Nostalgia. <laughs> Speaking of. Yeah. <laughs> we'd get there eventually. Nice work. <laughs> Solid segue. <laughs> oh, Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Uh, uh, were you a big Transformers, Transformers guy when you were younger? Yes, I was. Were you? Uh, not really. I was more of a G.I. Okay. Joe. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's, it's, I mean, you're not that much younger than me, but it is a little past your time, I guess. A little bit, yeah. My brother yeah. had a really big Transformers collection, yeah. uh, and he would never let me play with them, so I think that was a barrier to entry for me. Sure. <laughs> like, a literal, <laughs> literal, <laughs> literal barrier to entry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, you know, I, I know I, I saw a little bit of it when I was a kid. Um, so I prob- you never had the joy of being traumatized by Optimus's Prime, Optimus Prime's death in Transformers the movie. I did not. No, I I saw Transformers the movie for the first time like a year or two ago. Oh wow! For I it was it was in theaters again for like I guess the thirtieth anniversary or something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so I went and saw it then and. And yeah, I, d- I did not experience that, or or nor did I get to hear any Transformers say shit when I was a kid. 
Well, I'm sorry you missed that. It's, you know, there were plenty of other things to traumatize me as a kid. Well, sure. So I'm good. <laughs> I and, I was, and? like I said, I was more of a G.I. Joe, so I had, uh, I had Serpentor stabbing Duke with a rigid snake <laughs> <laughs> to traumatize me as a child. Well, sure, but at the end of that movie, you know, somebody off screen says, Duke's gonna be okay! I know! <laughs> I love that. Because <laughs> he absolutely died in that scene. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was... Uh, Definitely a a big Transformers fan. I didn't have very many of the toys because my parents uh, neglected me and were cheap. Uh, But I had a few. (laughs) Uh, Soundwave was was, uh, the biggest one that I had, I think. Nice. Um, And and yeah, I loved the cartoon and and the movie and and all that stuff. Uh, And then when I was, was like 16, 17, I think I was driving. Uh, there was a comic shop that opened, uh, like literally next door to my house, uh, which was a dream come true. Yeah. That sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Uh, for some reason at that point, like I started buying like the old Marvel series. Okay. Uh, like they had like a bundle of like the first four issues and then I just bought the rest of the series and I even bought the, uh, generation two series. Wow. Which was the uh, 90s grim and gritty Marvel version of uh, the Transformers. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. The first, the first issue of that series had a foil stamped uh, gatefold cover that uh, was a close up of Optimus Prime's face. And when you opened it up, uh, his face was packed full of uh, gun shells. Oh, wow. I, I remember, yeah. I remember uh, seeing the shiny cover. I did not know what was inside the gatefold. That's really weird. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the 90s. <laughs> it was full of the 90s. It sounds like <laughs> it. I, you know, you mentioning the comics actually reminds me, I think I inherited from my brother. Um, they had, they'd reprinted some of the early issues in like little digest sizes Okay. And I had one, I think it was, it was issue three, maybe three and four of the original series. Cause I know one of the issues in there was the one where they meet Spider-Man. Right. I and, think that's three. Yeah. yeah. And in that may, I, I've always sort of like the, the black costume of Spider-Man looks awesome. Yes. And, and you know, I, I've always sort of been fascinated by it. And I think probably because that was one of the first Spider-Man stories that I ever read. Cause he's in the alien costume in that random issue of transformers. Yep. I'm just I'm uh, putting, putting together psychological dots <laughs> in my brain. It's, it's, it's what this show is for, Joe. It's, it's, it's about healing. <laughs> yes. Primarily. <laughs> God, I hope so. That was our mission statement. I, I, need, from... I need to heal. <laughs> I know you do, buddy. <laughs> but but what better joy is there than just love for Spider-Man? It's true. There's there's yeah. very, very few things better than that. Yeah. Uh, just, just another side nostalgia trip. Uh, when the very first Spider-Man movie came out, the, the Sam Raimi one, uh, I was... So excited for that movie to come out because it felt like it had been a lifetime uh, just waiting for, you know, that Spider-Man movie. Right. And um, and my my uh, girlfriend at the time can uh, can back this up that uh, every time we uh, went to a store or whatever and I saw like Spider-Man merchandise or. uh you know, tie-in stuff to to that movie, like leading up to it coming out. Uh, I would just uh, go Spider-Man because <laughs> I was a twenty-one-year-old man, <laughs> not a child at all. Amazing, <laughs> uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> uh. So yeah, so no, I've I've always uh, you know had a fondness for the Transformers, and uh, 
we we have a mutual friend who I think, uh, at least for me, maybe makes me a little less excited about Transformers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he takes it a, a little far. He he takes the wind out of some things <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's it's nice that he's that into things. Sure. I, I mean, I wish I could love anything that much. Right. <laughs> um, but also, uh, so uh, w- when it comes to Transformer movies, what what is uh, your experience? Uh, I I saw the the first Michael Bay one. Uh, I remember like leaving leaving work early, like saying I was sick because I just didn't want to be there. And, sure. and one of my friends that worked there did the same thing. <laughs> and then so she and I just went to the movies to see Transformers. Yeah, sounds great. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, and then I think that's the only one I've seen. I may have watched the second one like on TV. Mm-hmm. But I think after the first one, I was just like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> this is fine. I enjoyed that. Okay. So, yeah, I, so I, I don't think I'd seen any of the other ones. I, I, my, that is very, very similar to my story. <laughs> uh, I saw the, the first, uh, Bay movie, uh, in theaters with, uh, my girlfriend at the time, the, the same one who put up with me, uh, breathing <laughs> Spider-Man all the time. She's, and, uh, she's very understanding. <laughs> she put up with a lot. <laughs> um... And, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed that movie and then, uh, just never felt the need to watch any of the sequels. Yeah. I don't know what it was about them that put me off. (laughs) Maybe it was all the discourse about Michael Bay that followed. I mean, that certainly didn't help. Yeah. I mean, I've generally not liked Michael Bay movies. Um... I think, you know, Transformers, the one, you know, is fine, but it also, like, just the way the characters are, uh, just sort of makes me not want to see that m- more, you know? You mean the, the, their personalities or just the way that they look? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the way that they look was a little off-putting. <laughs> Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, And, you know, to to top it off with just the Michael Bay style of filmmaking, uh, you know, combining that with, uh, you know, amorphous robots uh, and just becoming a clutter of motion and explosion on screen just, you know, it didn't make me feel great. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I walked away from it being relatively entertained, but you know, yeah, I, I just it was like, yeah, I don't need more of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sort of once you've seen it, right? What else? What else is he gonna do with it? Yeah, I mean, just uh, you know, and then the fact that you know the characters didn't really look like the characters. Uh, you can't really tell one from the other outside of you know Optimus Prime, really, right? Um, you know, yeah, I just, uh, it's just unnecessary. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I was glad, um, like I, I was excited for Bumblebee or I was, I was interested in it, I guess. Cause you know, what I, what I had seen looked more like the classic Tone. looks for the characters. Yeah. And yeah, just sort of tonally a little... A little less self-serious, I guess. Right. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, you know, I liked it. Um, I, I mean, I have my issues with it. Sure. But, uh, I mean, definitely compared to the Transformer movie that I had seen previously, um, it, it was, you know both a far departure and uh, improvement. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, um, I think if I if I had to choose between watching them, watching one of them again, I would definitely pick Bumblebee. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, uh, I, I mean, I'm just going to come out and say that the first five to ten minutes of this movie are probably my favorite part. Okay, just the, the Cybertron sequence? Yep. That makes sense? Uh, that just, was very just cool. Being, uh, a long time uh, Transformers fan, and uh, like I said, being uh, previously disappointed with uh, you know uh, you know the the looks of the characters that that this was uh, you know true to like you know the the original designs. Uh, it was it was uh, just it was a blast to see you know especially. Like characters like Soundwave and Shockwave and uh, every other wave character, <laughs> Tidal Wave and yeah, and the Wave, which is actually just a group of fifteen Transformers that all stand in a line and do a ripple thing from left to right. <laughs> You're just the very lame headmasters. <laughs> No, I I like uh, I always thought that uh, Shockwave looked terrifying. Oh yeah, um, I think probably because of the cover to Transformers number five, where yes. he's like the painted cover where he's just like standing super menacing, and it says the Transformers are all dead. That yeah. has that has been imprinted on my brain from a very young age. Is and that I, a uh, Sinkovich? Uh. Yeah, I think so. I uh, I believe so as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I love that cover. Yeah. yeah, it's an incredible cover, and just like the fact that like all the other Transformers have faces, and yeah. and that guy is just like a dot, <laughs> and yeah. that's just creepy He's as hell. I've always eye. liked that. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, and then Soundwave, I always thought was cool because he's like a Walkman, <laughs> and Walkmen are cool. And he I mean, and he was he's a transformer, but you can put other transformers inside him, and they ride around. And I and I I like that as well. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, I mean maybe it's because he was one of the only major transformers that I had as a kid. But uh, he he was always my favorite. Uh, on top of the fact that he has a really cool voice. I don't. Rem- I don't remember his voice. I just remember the look. It's it's like that very robotic, you know, echoey, filtered sound. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he he does talk in the movie. I forgot. That's all right. <laughs> it was like two hours ago. I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it it that. Yeah, that opening scene kind of makes me just want to see a whole Transformers movie like that. Yeah, it looked super cool. Um, it's it's weird that they looked like their classic selves, and then apparently when they come to Earth, they turn shitty. <laughs> but <laughs> aside from that... <laughs> not in this movie, though. No, not so much in this movie. Yeah, uh, just just the other ones. <laughs> The other five yeah. that exist. I mean, yeah. we see Bumblebee sort of start to make the shitty transition at the end <clears throat> of the movie. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so some of my problems definitely comes with just me being a nitpicky nerd. <laughs> uh, such as, okay, so Bumblebee comes to Earth, uh, and then he immediately scans a Jeep and can transform into a Jeep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then later finds the classic uh, VW Bug that we all, uh, at least all children of the 80s, uh, know and love uh, right. of Bumblebee. Um, so, and then later at the end of the movie, spoiler, he becomes uh, a Camaro. Uh, I don't think that's a huge spoiler. No, it's cause, just well, a brand of car yeah i mean this is a prequel for the other transformers movies where he's a camaro so right it had to happen sure yeah um so like i mean you know and and this is 
you know, where we, we begin debating just shit that we should not be debating <laughs> or, or at least things that I should not be debating. All right. <laughs> cause, cause you probably, uh, will be logical and rational about this and just tell me it's a movie. <laughs> Exciting. Uh, I'm but, excited. Uh, but you know, like, so when he scans these other cars and like, takes on these very different shapes of vehicles um so like his metal body is it just like liquidy (laughs) yes next question okay (laughs) satisfied good (laughs) no i you know i had that thought uh so so i'm this is a tangent uh i know it's shocking um but so, so I'm a Teen Titans fan, as I know you oh, are yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. And and a, a a discussion that I see come up relatively often is when uh, when Changeling slash Beast Boy uh, transforms into things, especially mm-hmm. things that are smaller or larger than a human. Uh, where does the extra mass either go or come from? Um, okay. I had that thought while while watching this movie because I actually thought uh, like Bumblebee, when he transforms into the VW, like Bumblebee's a relatively small transformer compared to the other ones in the movie. Right. And, and the bug is, you know, a little bit larger than him. But, you know, I, when, when I factored in, you know, the interior space, the and the space for the trunk because we know he mm-hmm. has a trunk you yes. know i i actually i really appreciated like oh it makes sense i feel like i can tell where where all of his mass is distributed right um as for the other vehicles like how that works when he scans them yeah. uh 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 <laughs> liquid metal <laughs> <laughs> No, I really have no idea. Uh, it's <laughs> like, it's like, cyber, Cybertronian the, science. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, like I, I mean, so like in in one of the very first scenes, like when he first lands on Earth and he does scan like the the Humvee or whatever that yeah. is, uh, and then transforms back into his robot self. Like his chest is like you know jeep shaped. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah. Oh, weird. And then later, you know, he he scans the the bug, and then whenever he transforms, like he's got more of like the bug shape on yeah. his chest area. You know, interesting. Okay, so yeah, yeah may, maybe it's like a T one thousand scenario <laughs> where where it is just like liquid metal or just something about it where he's able to adapt certain pieces of him to look like other things. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and there's like other instances like, uh, like midpoint in the movie when, uh, uh, our main character and her potential love interest are like joyriding around in Bumblebee. And she just sort of like taps on his roof and he becomes a convertible. Right. Like things like that made me just like, well, wh- well how, well, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. To that, I I suppose I would say uh, it's just a movie. Go with it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I <laughs> but know. I no, I totally get how that would <laughs> how that would take you out of it, especially if you if you you know grew up with with the toys and right. knew you know there's a very specific way that these transformers transform. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I totally get it. Yeah. Um, and then our, our two... It, it took me almost the entire movie to realize that uh, the two villainous uh, Transformers, the, the two Decepticons... Yeah. Uh, who are original characters to the movie. Okay, I was going to ask if they existed pre- previously. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, they did not. Uh, but they. it took me a while to realize that they are triple changers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because they they can do their their normal form and then cars and then planes or helicopters. Yeah, I don't know. Do we see? No, I guess we do see. Or no, because the one that he kills initially is that. Does he kill Starscream? No, that is Blitzwing. Okay, uh, I had to look that up. Okay, is he uh, just a Starscream knockoff? Yeah, basically. There's okay. like four 
jets who all sorta look alike, and uh, yeah, it's a uh, star scream, blitzwing, thrust, and uh, just some other ones. <laughs> thrust. The other one is drag. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, so that one that one was definitely a plane. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know if we see them transform into anything other than cars until towards the end. I don't um, no, yeah, uh, I guess it is. Yeah, when towards the climax, when they they uh, reveal that they can also do helicopter and jet. Yeah, but yeah, that yeah. was that was cool. I liked that. Yeah. It made them definitely more menacing. Yeah. Um, so so the one thing that, you know, I definitely liked uh, about this movie more than, you know, the, the Bayformer movie is uh, that, that it was, I mean, you know, uh, aside from giant, you know, earth conquering robots, uh, you know, it's a pretty small scale movie. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the parts that I liked a lot were just the parts where it's was her name Charlie. I think yes. uh, the the yep. parts that were just Charlie and Bumblebee, yeah. like like just hanging out, just sort of pa- palling around. So like that was yeah. it was nice because Bumblebee and, and... really gets the shit kicked out of him for the first fifteen twenty minutes of this movie. <laughs> He really does. Like everyone is mean to Bumblebee, and then he finally meets Charlie, and she's nice. Yeah, and it and made me it, feel. It made me feel good. And and he is like a whipped dog at that point. He too. is. I mean, he's just like a little guy. He's just like the. He's the runt of the Transformers. <laughs> just getting kicked around and and harpooned and shot at by the military. Yeah. And then he meets uh, someone who's nice, and that was all he needed. Yeah. He gets his voice <laughs> box ripped out. That was horrific. Yes, it was. Jesus. Um, although, you know, uh, that's a carryover from the Bay thing. And I know. Yeah, I've never been a huge fan of, of that aspect of, uh, of that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought uh, they did. they did a really good job making him emotive just in his face. Oh yeah, without having to do the radio gimmick too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they didn't overplay it. It it sort of works out where he's trying to figure it out anyway throughout the movie. So you know he doesn't exactly overdo it. Yeah, <clears throat> and become super proficient at it. Um, and yeah, I I, I liked his his expressions and body language and uh, you know. It at first I was a little put off because he he has quite a bit of agency like in the, in those first ten minutes or so yeah uh, and then when he's found he is just sort of like you know a whipped puppy and I was like well you know that just seems like a drastic change yeah uh, but you know it is uh, I don't know if it's explicitly stated or anything like that but uh, you know you are left to to figure out that it's because he essentially loses his memory. Right. Um, <clears throat> which, you know, well, I was able to reconcile that in my head. Yeah. I, I think there's, there's stuff that comes up like during that first battle with the, the not star scream. Um, like there, he, you see a lot of stuff come up on his like screen or like his, you know, whatever his vision, his POV shots yeah. are. Yeah. And and yeah, one of them is definitely like memory failing. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I it 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 was definitely a drastic change, but I didn't have a problem with it. Yeah. Uh I mean, it worked, you know, for what it was. Yeah. Um but yeah, absolutely. The the best parts of this movie are definitely just the scenes between him and uh Haley Stanfield. Yeah. Steinfeld. Steinfeld. Uh, yeah. Um you know, and and she's she's a fine character. Yeah, yeah, uh, she, she's somewhat she's, cookie cutter. Yeah, a, a little tropey, but uh, you know, uh, she she makes it work. Um, you know, and then yeah, the plot, such as it is, <laughs> I 
I mean, there's not too much to this movie. <laughs> there's not. I, you know, it it reminded me. It's like E. T. But, yes. but with more violence. Like if there were <laughs> if there were evil ETs who were after our ET, <laughs> that that's this movie basically. <laughs> kind of want to see that movie. Right? <laughs> that was the sequel, Night Skies. <laughs> they never did it. <laughs> oh, Spielberg. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's funny when when the movie started and like the Autobots are abandoning Cybertron and and you know <laughs> Optimus Prime basically puts Bumblebee in a ship and sends him off to Earth. I was like, are we watching another Superman movie in a row? <laughs> uh, you know, if we were, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it too. I I you yeah. know I wish that that Bumblebee had gone on to become the the champion of Earth. <laughs> he sort of did, and then just went and hid in secret for 25 years or whatever until Shia LaBeouf <laughs> found him in a junkyard. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess that leaves room for more Bumblebee sequels? Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that, you know, maybe, maybe they thought that there wouldn't be there wouldn't be one, and there probably isn't. I don't know if there's one in development or not. Uh, I read that there is okay uh, announced uh, last year or early this year uh, that they they were definitely gonna work on one, uh, but I think uh, like every other movie in existence, uh, you know, things are a little bit on hold at the right. moment. Right, the, the the pandemic and whatnot. Sure, the whatnot. <laughs> sure. But but I would have liked but, it at the end because you know at the end they have their their tearful goodbye and then he turns into a Camaro and drives off. Yeah. But it would have been nice if, if Bumblebee, cause you know, at, at the end of the movie, Charlie's mother and, and brother and, and her mom's boyfriend have, have all sort of come to accept her and what she's going through. And, and, you know, they even help during the, the final chase sequence. And it would have been cool if Bumblebee had just stuck around, you know. Yeah. Make make this I, the cast of the new the new Bumblebee franchise. I you know I was totally on board with uh, that thought too. Uh, I mean, you know, always uh, happy to see Pamela Adlin in anything, right? You know, and uh, you know, especially if it's not the C.K. related. <laughs> Um, and yeah, what, I, I was, was, was thinking, he not okay, in this? I thought he was Optimus Prime in this. <laughs> yeah, he makes RC watch him masturbate. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> you just went for it. <laughs> Got him. Oh, I, I'm I sorry. heard Louis C.K. was in Dayton recently. Was he? <laughs> yeah. So Dave Chappelle is doing that. Like, I don't know if you've heard about the, the like comedy club thing that he's doing. I don't know if it's in Yellow Springs or outside of Yellow Springs, but it's basically uh, just like like he has been showing up at this comedy club and bringing, you know, his celebrity friends to to this club, or maybe it's in Dayton. I don't know. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I guess Louis C.K. showed up uh, huh. like last week. You know, huh. to his friend Dave Chappelle's comedy thing. Huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh wow! Uh, all of this is news to me. <laughs> I'll I'll find a link and send it to you. I I read yeah. a little bit about it and was just disappointed in in Dave, Dave Chappelle, Chappelle and in in yeah. my hometown. Yeah, yeah, as you should be. <laughs> also, uh, you know, uh, I mean, we just mentioned it several minutes ago, I know, but uh, there's a pandemic. Well, yeah, there's uh, that as well. <laughs> why is Dave Chappelle putting on comedy shows <laughs> during a pandemic? Because, I don't know. That's uh, an excellent question. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> as I understand it, the venue is very small. And and everyone who comes in, like the seats are spread out, so there's social distancing. I don't know all of the details. Oh boy. 
Oh, and New Mutants is coming out in like two weeks. So. I saw that. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I got an email from AMC. <laughs> Are you going to go for 15 cents? <laughs> you know what? No. <laughs> Still no. Nope, not at all. <laughs> Uh, I posted a little uh, rant on on Twitter earlier today. Um, you know, I I like going to the movies, mm-hmm. uh, but also I have not had a positive movie going experience in the last twenty years or so, <laughs> right? Uh, because people are fucking horrible, and I just absolutely know that uh, if I were to go to a movie theater now. All those same horrible people are all the same people who would just refuse to wear a mask because of my freedoms. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So, yeah, I am. uh, I don't think I'm going to go to a movie theater until there is a verified vaccine. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Like the email that I got was from AMC because I'm I'm a member of the Stubbs group. Yeah program and it was like you have until december 1st to to opt back in to to amc stubs uh if you don't opt in before then you, your account will automatically be reactivated uh, and i was like oh cool i'm gonna cancel that immediately yeah good for you <laughs> uh, there's also there, there's no amc theaters uh, here in uh, the dayton area so. right um yeah i'm i'm just yeah uh as far as i'm concerned i will wait for streaming or vod for everything from now on yeah it's it's Fuck been, you chris nolan it's been kind of nice yeah it has are people clamoring to see tenet on a big screen like seriously i, I guess are people clamoring uh, the, to see that movie all the the nolan fanboys i guess all right who, who claim he can do no wrong despite several terrible movies in a row. <laughs> oh boy. Interstellar. Yeah. yeah. Dark Knight. Oh, I like that Dark one. Knight Rises. I, I like that one too. Okay. <laughs> Bumblebee. Uh, Bumblebee. <laughs> Uh, uh, I will. I will not see a Bumblebee sequel in the theater. No, definitely not. <laughs> w- watching this on Prime was the perfect way to watch it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's also available on Hulu. I saw that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's 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 a perfectly fine movie. Yeah. Uh, it. Uh, you know. I. Yeah, like I said earlier, I like the the smaller scope of the movie in general, and I think like the first super action packed ten minutes of it are kind of the best aspects of it. Yeah, yeah, you could probably uh, watch that on YouTube if you're yeah. if you're so inclined. Probably, you, it would avoid uh, John Cena scenes because uh, yeah. he's in this movie. Yeah. He's, yeah, he is. He's fine too, I guess. He's okay. I mean, he's, he's no The Rock. No, well, who is? No one is. True. Uh, when it comes to, you know, wrestlers who became actors, you know, he's he's not in the top tier, but definitely not in the bottom tier. Yeah. he He's generic military guy in this movie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think this is the third movie I've ever seen with John Cena in it. Okay. Uh, I saw 12 Rounds, uh, which is like his Die Hard franchise that he was only ever in the first one. Okay. Uh, which, uh, you know, uh, it was fine. Just generic action movie with, uh, you know, Irish bad guy. Okay. Um, and then a couple months ago, I watched uh, Blockers. Oh, nice. Uh, which I loved. Yeah, that movie's great. I did not expect it to be a movie that I would love. Yeah, it looks so stupid. Yep. But it it had a lot of really good things going for it. It really did. That is a fantastic movie that I would highly recommend. Definitely. And John Cena is in it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, the only other scene... uh, Only other Cena. Only other uh, John Cena movie I've seen is... uh, 
uh, he was in Trainwreck. <laughs> oh, okay. The Amy yeah. Schumer movie. And he was fine. Yeah. And that movie's yeah. fine. I, I, I have very little interest in seeing that. Yeah. Bill Hader's in it, and he's really good. I like Bill Hader <clears throat> a lot. I like Bill Hader. Uh, but, you know, I just don't, uh, you know, support, uh, you know, comedian who... Oh, no. Uh, so, yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go through with it. I didn't know what you were going to say. <laughs> I was concerned. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I know I know she's not great. Yeah, she's not, you know, I... Uh, she was on a bunch of podcasts before she became hugely popular, and I always enjoyed her. Okay. Uh, but then once she hit, like, you know, pretty big success, I just found her more and more kind of just uh, intolerable. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm, you know. I understand. Probably because she's a woman. Right, yeah, you know. <laughs> and a sellout. <laughs> yeah. She got popular. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. There is a very small part of me that still thinks that way about certain people. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll talk I used about to be a huge Mark Millar fan until uh, he became really popular. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, part of it is the quality of his work, too. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, that did take a huge nosedive. <laughs> Uh, uh, something about, you know, just, uh, not trying anymore. Yeah. Just posting yeah. along. Yep. Generating Make Hollywood pitches. Money. Yep. <laughs> oh boy. Bumblebee. Yep. Bumblebee. <laughs> uh, yeah, this was, this was, uh, it was, it was a fine, fun movie. <laughs> it's, it's a very nice distracting movie. Exactly. And it's not it's not super long. It's it's just under two hours, which is nice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and again, I think like every other movie that's ever been made, it could still be shorter. I mean, probably if it yeah. if it was just just the the parts with uh, Haley Steinfeld in the car, yeah. I'd have been happy. Yeah, I think I want her be the love bug. Is that what I'm saying? Possibly. <laughs> All right, with so Haley Steinfeld. My pick for next week is Herbie Fully Loaded. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, one of the, the biggest issues I had with the movie was its uh, decision to be set in the 80s. Okay. Um, which I feel was only made just so that it could have this uh, annoying all-star soundtrack. Right. Um, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, uh, uh, wink and nod nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I feel like that's, there's a lot of disposable pop culture references that I think, uh, just overload some parts of this movie. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. The, uh, the one, uh, one that I did enjoy was when. Uh, when her neighbor, who's obsessed with her or whatever, like he comes Memo? out of his, he comes out of his. I'm sorry. His name is Memo. Memo, really? Mm, yes. Okay, I thought it was. I thought it was like Emil or something. Nope, it's Memo. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but uh, I, I did enjoy. Uh, like he comes out of his house. Uh, I, I forget what the circumstances were, but he had a, a, a GoBots catalog in his hands. Did he? That made me chuckle. Yeah, like he, he's carrying this thing and he just like throws it in the bushes. And as he was throwing <laughs> it, I was like, oh, that's a GoBots catalog. Huh. Yeah. I, if, if I'd have noticed that, I probably would have enjoyed that. <laughs> and, I, and I enjoyed the use of the touch. Uh, at one oh, point, the, the song from uh, Boogie Nights. Yes, exactly. Famously, the Dirk Diggler's radio hit. <laughs> I enjoyed that as well. Uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the only thing uh, specifically about the music that I, I disliked was that uh, I think the movie sort of implies at the end that Bumblebee actually becomes a fan of the Smiths and that cannot be stood for. <laughs> now, was that before or after you knew Morrissey was, uh, or it, it came out recently that Morrissey was a giant asshole. 
I can safely say I have never liked Morrissey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, him him being a, a racist piece of shit just sort of uh, helps that along. Nice. Just seals the deal. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. That's fair. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I had is... that on my mind every time the Smiths came up. Yeah, that, that didn't help. Uh, but no, I have always just found him to be execrable. Because he just... Uh, oh, man. Is there a more pretentious man alive? <laughs> I don't think there is. Yeah, on, just, on, just, on reflection. Oh, uh, just what a sludge of a human being he is. <laughs> uh, it was the eighties. It was a simpler time. <clears throat> sure. And he's he's a literal robot alien. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait, Marcy? Yes, more more. Oh, he's okay. a robot right. alien. All right. <laughs> so I'm willing to cut him some slack. <laughs> So you're okay with him being super racist? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm okay with it. Okay. But I can understand it since he's from another planet. He doesn't right. understand. Gotcha. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sighs> yeah, I don't. I don't know that I have a ton more to say about this. Yeah, me neither. It was pretty fun. Like I said, I'd, yeah. I'd probably watch it again if if it was on TV. Yeah, it's it's it it is a one of those perfect, uh, you know. I mean, I guess channel surfing doesn't really exist anymore, but uh, you know, if it did, it's one of those perfect Sunday afternoon. Nothing else is on. Uh, you know, I'll just leave this on. Movies. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect way to describe it. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I would. Uh, Definitely wait until the uh, it's streaming, but I would watch the sequel. Yeah, I probably would as well. Yeah, especially if uh, Haley Steinfeld is still in it. Yeah, I I enjoy her in things. She is very enjoyable. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, anything uh, making you uh, less horrible this week? Ah. Uh... All right, I have a confession to make. Okay. So, uh, we have been watching Big Brother, <laughs> the the reality TV show competition. Yes. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, and it's so dumb and so <laughs> mindless <laughs> that it is exactly what I need right now. <clears throat> All right. So, and, and when I say uh, we've been watching Big Brother, let me clarify. Uh, we we started watching the new season, which just started, uh, like, last week. Uh, mm. And then we were like, this is fine. What else could we do? And then we realized that uh, CBS All Access has live feeds from the Big Brother house. Oh, so, no. so we signed up for <laughs> CBS All Access. So we could watch the live feeds. <laughs> CBS All Access also has all of the previous 21 seasons of Big Brother. <laughs> so now we are watching the current season of Big Brother. The uh, the live feeds every now and then just to it's just nice background noise. Uh, and also season two from 2001. <laughs> So if I had to say one thing was making my life less terrible for the past week or so, it'd be Big Brother. I know. It's um, it's a lot. You know, like, you know, whatever gets you through, you know, whatever brings you, you know, momentary joy, I am all for. <laughs> And and if it's watching Big Brother or past seasons of it, no, great, good for you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, signing up <laughs> for all access to watch the live feed. <laughs> okay, all right. Let me give you a and little bit of it's background. It's a bit much. <laughs> it is a bit much. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I, I should say that the uh, the Big Brother live feeds were just sort of the thing that put us over the edge on it. Uh, I had been talking about wanting to sign up for All Access for a while because I wanted to watch uh, the Good Fight and the Twilight Zone and the the Star Trek shows. Okay. So, but but the live feeds. <laughs> When Jenny found out about those, she was just like, all right, we're signing up for this. We're just going to do it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, that's that's what I got. Okay. All right. <laughs> How about you? Um, uh, so I, I, you know, uh, I've just not been doing a ton of anything, really. Um, I finished watching Sleepy Hollow and that that sort of you know has has made me a little sad there yeah uh, that that uh, this bad show is now completely done with can i can i ask uh, you so i know that um that they wrote nicole Beharry's character off yes and she was like the female lead of the series yes what is what is that last season like without her <clears throat> um it's okay okay uh they <laughs> so even though it's called Sleepy Hollow, that now uh, the last season takes place in Washington D.C. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, Crane and uh, Jenny have essentially moved there, uh, where they've discovered that uh, there's a uh, uh, a a secret government agency called Agency Three Fifty Five. Uh, set up by George Washington and uh, uh, in a letter written 200 some years ago he uh, declares that uh, Ichabod should be the, uh, the the lead of it in 200 years time. Oh sure okay uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, so they, they go there and uh, basically everything that they had in Sleepy Hollow they now have in Washington D.C. Uh, and there's a new female lead, uh, who is a, uh, Department of Homeland Security, uh, agent who sort of gets, uh, involved. Uh, and it turns out that her 10 year old daughter is the new witness. Oh, okay. Replacing, uh, the, the Abby character. Right. Yeah. Uh, wow. Which, uh, and, and Jeremy Davies was the uh, the villain of the season. Oh, I like Jeremy Davies. He is very good. Um, it, you know, it was fine. All right. You know, uh, you know, uh, it's it's especially like you know recently finding out exactly what happened to uh, you know Nicole's character and why they wrote her out. Uh, you know, that's that's real shitty. Yeah. What they did to her. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, uh, otherwise it's, it's you know, just uh, Sleepy Hollow trucking along as, as per usual. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, the real uh, joy was that uh, I got uh, my copy of uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips' Pulp in the mail today. Oh, nice. Uh, they're, they're sort of noir western crime graphic novel yeah yeah that looks great it really does i read a couple pages of it earlier today and uh yeah i'm very excited to to read it some more they are a fantastic uh, comics team together yeah you know i i haven't read i think maybe i read the first one or two issues of the criminal relaunch Mm -hmm. and then i just fell behind but i've got them all in my queue on hoopla to to get to eventually yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever read anything by them that I haven't enjoyed. So. Yeah, uh, I know because uh, uh, because I on Gutter Trash, Jason and I reviewed a few of their works together, and he's never been a huge fan. But uh, there's something seriously wrong with him. Well, yeah, yeah. We we, we knew that already. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm very excited uh, that they just announced this week their new graphic novel series coming out. Yeah, is it Reckless? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, that should be really cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, part of me, you know, there there's a little part of me that wants to see, you know, what Sean Phillips does with uh, other people, but uh, you know, as long as uh, he 
he and Brubaker pulling that quality work, you know, I'm fine. Yeah, he seems comfortable yeah. with it. Yeah, I'm glad he's found his thing. Yeah. Uh, he, he's just been one of my favorite artists uh, since his Hellblazer days. Uh, so I'm, I'm very glad that he has uh, has found uh, success. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's it for me. Nice. Yeah. So uh, what what uh, what about a movie for next week? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to go with an older movie. Okay. Uh, that had been on Netflix and now is on Amazon Prime, or at least was last okay. time I checked. Hopefully it's still there. <laughs> um, it's an Orson Welles movie. Ooh. And it's called The Stranger. Okay. And I, uh, actually, I did have that on my list on Netflix. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, it got taken off uh, around the time that uh, Enemy and a few other things got taken off, but. Like all the other movies on your list that you're going to pick? Basically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, when I made my new list, <laughs> I found it again on Amazon Prime. All right. Uh, you know, I... I mean, other than, you know, I mean, tying it back to, you know, today's episode, uh, the only Orson Welles movie that I've ever really seen <laughs> is Transformers the movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Amazing. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> I love that. Uh, no, I think I've seen The Third Man. Is that the, yeah, is that the movie I think of? Yeah, that's a great movie. <clears throat> yeah, I love that movie. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I'm not too uh, familiar with his uh, his work overall. So other than, you know, just, uh, you know, the impressions of him on uh, Pinky and the Brain and, uh, you know... Uh, him as uh, you, you, uh, Unicron? Yes, is that his Unicron. Name? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his, uh, of course, his commercials. Of course, for peace. Yes. Yeah. I think he, he made some other movies as well. I think so. Yeah, I don't, none of them are very famous. I've, I've never heard of most of them. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. The Stranger. All right. The Stranger. All right. I'm excited. Yeah, I've, I've been... I've been wanting to watch some older movies, and Jenny's generally not into them. Sure. So and... she only likes color and talkies. Exactly, and Big Brother. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. I mean, that really explains a lot. It's true. Big Brother is both in color and a talkie. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, the people who you know, tend to love it you know lean towards that type of entertainment are definitely not one for classics That's true luddites <laughs> oh it's gonna be a full-length episode of i love films next week excellent <laughs> <laughs> oh boy all righty all right we'll see you next week Thank you for listening to The View Masters. You can subscribe to the show directly at view.guttertrash.net or at iTunes and leave us a review. Visit view.guttertrash.net for email information and links to Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time on The View Masters.